The Prophet ﷺ said, hadith is in Bukhari, so it is completely authentic. Allah never sent a prophet except that he was a shepherd. He was a shepherd of sheep. So they said, not even you, O Messenger of Allah. And this shows, notice this, the majority of the Sahaba didn't know that the Prophet ﷺ had a job as a shepherd. And they are his companions. And so how about the other details when he was a child? So they said, how about you? I was a shepherd and I used to tend to the flock of the people of Mecca in return for some qararit, some pennies. In another hadith, the Prophet wasallam, in one of the later expeditions, he saw some of the shepherds taking care of the sheep that they had. And so he said, I advise you to find the tree of the Iraq, a specific type of tree, and find the darker branches because it will be better for your flock. How do you know which plant is the best for the sheep? And not even which plant, but which season of the plant is best for the sheep. So he said, I used to be a shepherd. And in another version of the hadith in Muslim Ahmad, he said, Musa was sent when he was a shepherd. And Dawood was sent to become a prophet when he was a shepherd. And I too was a shepherd in Ajad. Why? Would Allah will that our Prophet ﷺ starts his life with the most, the lowest paid, the most difficult job, really in all of Mecca? Because there's a lot of wisdoms here. First and foremost, being a shepherd gives you the opportunity to engage in solitude, to think. When you're a shepherd, you're all alone. You go away from society, from people, you take your flock of sheep, there are no other human beings, and you have solitude, you contemplate, and you think about the purpose of life. We just look around us. Those people who are busy with the dunya are the least spiritual. Those people who have nothing to do other than this world, they can get by ignoring religion. And it's not a coincidence, by the way, that... Atheism is more popular and more common in the most opulent and rich countries. And also amongst the professions that have the most money. Generally speaking, farmers, people who are involved with nature, they're very religious people. Isn't that the case? Why? Because when you're involved with nature, with the creation of Allah, automatically it has an impact on your soul. You cannot really be an atheist if you're tending the flock and you're seeing nature and you're taking care of your cultivation. When you're involved with this, you have this iman, this ruhaniyyah, this spirituality. And when you're cut off from the creation of Allah and you're immersed in this dunya, your heart becomes hard. And you can ignore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can even be so arrogant as to say there is no God. And again, it's not a coincidence. The people who are the poorest on earth are generally the most religious. And the people who are the most immersed in materialism, they have the hardest hearts and they can uh, ignore uh, the fact of religion and being religious. Another benefit of being a shepherd, sheep are very similar to men in that they need to be taken care of or else they're going to go astray. Sheep need a shepherd and every single animal has a personality and the shepherd understands this personality. Some sheep are stubborn, some are soft and gentle, right? Some, uh, they know where they're going, others they follow the pack. Some are the leaders, some are not. So the shepherd gets to understand each and every sheep in the flock. The shepherd knows everyone. If you go to the, any farmer, and he'll mention names, this is this, this is that, this is this. And he deals with every animal according to its personality. And this is what a leader needs to do. And this is what a prophet of Allah needs to do. That they need to deal with every person according to their mizaj, according to their personality. Also, another blessing of being a shepherd is that being a shepherd makes you soft and tender on the one hand and brave and courageous on the other. Soft and tender for your own flock and brave and courageous in fighting wolves and in fighting other beasts that will attack these sheep. You're all alone. You have, you don't, there's not a group of people there with you. And so it simultaneously makes you soft and loving because these are your animals, you have to take care of them and it also makes you brave and fearless because you are responsible to protect your flock against the enemy. And our Prophet ﷺ said that the people who own horses are going to be the ones who are full of pride and the people who own camels are going to be the ones full of arrogance. And the people who own sheep will be the ones full of sakina and wiqar, humility and humbleness. 
And this is exactly one of the reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made every prophet a person who took care of sheep. And so a shepherd inculcates certain qualities, patience, humbleness, humility, bravery, mercy, tenderness. And it is not a coincidence that later on in life, our Prophet was very tender towards animals because he was a shepherd. Our Prophet once, a camel came to him and began making its noises. Tears came out of its eyes. And the hadith is in uh, Sunan al-Nisa'i. And the Prophet ﷺ soothed the camel and calmed it down until it stopped crying. And then he said, where is the owner of the camel? And a man came and he goes, this animal has complained against you. SubhanAllah. This animal has complained against you. That you overwork it and underfeed it and you beat it. Fear Allah with regards to these animals that Allah has blessed you with. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah, you're not allowed to be cruel even to animals. And he's telling the owner, fear Allah with regards to this animal that Allah has blessed you with. There is a tenderness even towards animals. Where did this come from? Of course, from Allah. But all of this builds that up. Being a shepherd and taking care of the flock. Another aspect of being a shepherd at this young age, he's hardly 14, 15 years old. It shows that he understands he needs to earn money. He's not going to be a freeloader off of his uncle Abu Talib. He needs to get on his own feet and be independent to help his uncle out to take care of the expenses of the house. Yet another blessing of being a shepherd is to show the simple lifestyle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he used to do the most baseline of manual labor and this really shows us that there is no sin, there is no dishonor in working for your own money and in working for your own rizq. Our Prophet ﷺ did it and the Prophet ﷺ said that the purest money that you can earn is the money that you earn from the labor of your hands. And then he said, and even the Prophet Dawood ﷺ, he would earn his money from the labors of his hands. He was a carpenter and an ironsmith and he would get money from these things and that is how he would take care of himself and this shows us as well that one of the greatest signs of sincerity is that you do something for the good of the people in return for nothing from them. The Prophet ﷺ earned his own sustenance. He didn't get it from the people around him and there are many verses in the Quran قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا قُلْ مَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مَالًا I'm not asking you for money. I'm not asking you for sustenance when I'm preaching to you what Islam is. I have no motive for doing this other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the reality that when you don't have a favor, sorry, when the people don't have a favor on you, then you are more pure in your call to them. When they're not paying you, what excuse and motivation do you have for being a prophet of Allah? And also one final point here. It shows us that even when the Prophet ﷺ became a prophet and he had all that he wanted, if he wanted to have it, he could have had it. He was not embarrassed to tell people of his simple past. I started over there. And this is the reality of everything, not just religion, but the deen and dunya. You need to start at the bottom and work your way to the top. And then you will be the most successful. If you start at the top, somehow it happens, a fluke of coincidence, a birthright, something. You're not ever going to be as successful as those who started from the bottom and worked their way to the top. And this is the reality of business as it is the reality of the religion as well. Look at the most successful entrepreneurs on the face of this earth. People like Bill Gates and, and, and Steve Jobs and all of them, they all started from the bottom, from their basements and from their backyards and from their garages. Isn't that the case? And they are the ones who then build the largest empires. Never is the one who inherits all of this instantaneously as successful as the one who builds it from scratch. It's the sunnah of Allah. And the same applies with the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. He started right from the bottom to get to the highest pinnacle. He went through every phase of life. And then when you get there, then indeed Allah has blessed you with it. And Allah has caused you to deserve it and earn it. Otherwise, if you just get it without any labor, then you will not appreciate it and you will not do justice to it. So our Prophet ﷺ begins being a shepherd and he works his way all the way to the top of being the Prophet of Allah. And look how true is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says,
مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Your Lord has not abandoned you, nor has He shown you any harshness. وَلَا الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى And every stage that happens to you will be better than every stage that came. Your life will become easier, and even the next life will be better than this life. وَلَا الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى وَلَا سَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى Allah will give you until you are content. أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ يَتِيمًا فَأَوَى Didn't I find you an orphan and I was the one who protected you? وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى And we found you not upon guidance and we gave you guidance. وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى And we found you with nothing and we gave you all that you needed. Therefore, فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقَهَرْ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ Be good to the beggar, be good to the orphan. When Allah has blessed you with so much, have a soft heart. And that's what we said. When you begin in a, such a harsh manner, you will have a soft heart and you will appreciate the blessings of Allah. And if all of this were to have been handed to him instantaneously, then he would not have had that appreciation that he had.